So this is a talk about mathematical way of life. I promise this is going to be more about life. So please sit down, don't run away, just thinking it's mathematics. I met people in the back and uh, they said they're not the math type. Uh, even worse, they didn't know me, me or my brand, me Galileo, and I really feel sad for them. We are going to talk about uh, mathematical way of life. Uh, but before that, I have to admit that I have been a struggler like many of us here who said they are not math type. When in grade 5, I was named, I was by getting called in my own family uh, by one of my uncle as 22 and half because that's the score, that's the marks I had got in grade 5. And I do uh, connect with uh, the embarrassment and uh, sort of humiliation despite being shed in a humorous way uh, and, and I had sort of accepted until my father decided to take it as a challenge and he said that, you know, leave aside the books. He picked up small chits and he says, we will go through uh, the problems as if we are solving puzzles and from then on the tables turned. Uh, every school, every uh, institution I went to either uh, I topped the math and physics class or I was among the top five, certainly. Uh, this is just to say how things can turn with small help from your surrounding, from the coaches, from the teachers and the way you are being taught mathematics. But the problem is not just about an individual. The problem is a lot bigger. The whole math literacy, the math, math proficiency globally is at abysmally alarming level. Globally, UNICEF report says 58% of kids lack the minimal proficiency level in mathematics. And if you thought India was any better, uh, it's equally bad or perhaps worse. Our own uh, assessment survey done in 2017 and the UNESCO report based on that says that India lacks 90% of our kids actually lack math profic minimal proficiency level in mathematics. Even if you give a margin of error of 20%, very large, at 70% proficiency level, our kids are just not getting the right math education. And this should make us lose sleep all across. This is happening when actually we need more math because in next seven years, the world is going to be seeing roughly 300 million jobs going away. In India alone, we'll be losing 120 million jobs in next seven years to AI and robotics, overall making it uh, loss to automation. And uh, this is, it's evident the world needs more math, not less more mathematical thinking abilities, more problem solving abilities and more creative original problem solving abilities, not less. When, and, and that is when our proficiency levels, as we saw in the previous slide, is actually at an alarming level. Okay, uh, no math uh, speech, no math talk can go without talking about giving you a math problem. So please take out your pen and paper. I was just joking. Uh, this is, we'll come back to this small problem. This is a grade five problem and uh, we will come back to it. It seems very innocuous, very, very innocuous. We'll come back to it. Just keep thinking about it. And see, this was a time question for 45 seconds for grade five or grade six kids, depending upon which global curricula you follow. Okay. So what is it that uh, makes math so difficult? Are some of us preordained? Is it in the genes? Is it genetics? It is hereditary? Fortunately, it doesn't seem so. Uh, University of Pittsburgh professor who actually referred the uh, research by German scientists uh, says only 20% of math abilities are actually linked to genes. The rest 80% of math and mathematical thinking ability are nothing, have nothing to do with genes and hereditary. 
In fact, on the contrary, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology did a research and came out saying there is absolutely no linkage. So it's clear there are various other research which can be referred and most of them align with this thought process. There is no linkage or very minimal linkage, meaning this is a skill which can be developed as a child grows and after they come into the world, it's not something which they pick up in the womb. A very interesting encounter that I had and this would actually tell you, you know, a, in, a, in a very simple way, illustrate the power of math. This was pick I had taken on Bangalore airport highway last year before on, on 15th August. This crane operator was trying to host the national flag and he was trying to keep it straight. So every time he would put, put the elevation, the flag would instead of being like this, it would go like this. He just couldn't do it. I was seeing from a, a top building nearby and I, I saw he, his flag was tilted despite his best attempt. If he knew a little more math, he had the passion. So the combination is mathematical thinking needs passion and math just for problem solving, just for seeking original solution and the foundational math both together. If he knew a little math, roughly grade 7 or grade 8, he would have it would have been a cakewalk. All he needed was the angle of elevation here is same by which he had to tilt the flag on when, when on the ground and he would have achieved it on first attempt. Okay, uh, that was that didn't seem to have a big impact. Okay, let's let's look at something which actually changed the world and which was as ingenuous as commonplace as simplistic as a 7th, 8th grader maths. Uh, every one of us know this is a similar triangle. Uh, even if you have forgotten math, this will seem commonsensical that the ratios of these two sides are actually equal uh, for a similar triangle. What's the big deal about it? Okay, I'm sure none of us are able to uh, relate to what the big deal is. Okay, I gave you a I'm adding an incentive. I'm giving you a $5 coin. What more? Can you do something path breaking with this? Still, most of us, I believe, are clueless. But here is what uh, happened. Uh, just with this knowledge, Aristarchus, the Greek philosopher, actually found out the distance from Earth to Moon. Just with this school mathematics, basic knowledge of mathematics, and using a coin, he could actually get the approximate the distance from earth to moon with so the genesis of everything that we are trying to do by for trying to find water on moon trying to develop electricity on moon trying to launch expedition beyond the moon and beyond the solar system all that has a genesis in a grade 7 math see the power of math another one is that of strength Another Greek philosopher actually just used the corresponding angle, if you recall, just the corresponding angle of when, when two parallel lines are cut, just this knowledge he needed and a power of observation. When he mixed it with a chest for finding solution, he actually found the size of earth and that is very close to what we know the size of earth. I don't think we can close the session now with this is enough to emphasize on the power of math but I have been given some time so I'll I'll go on speaking so why is math a big deal why is it a big deal I think the you know it's it's very simple if you learn it's no different than trying to learn swimming or cycling on paper you are going to drown you are going to break a leg if you just learn any of those on, 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 on paper alone. You have to, this has to be applied. You have to be practically experiencing. You have to be practically visualizing yourself and experiencing to really come to be able to learn these skills. And that's exactly what is happening. And that is why you cannot learn math if you just do it for operational proficiency just do it for uh, road solutions. 
that's that's the crux of the issue that we have clearly mathematical fluency is at cross purposes with the beauty and power of mathematics now let's come back to the problem that i had mentioned earlier that was multiply divide add and subtract by 2 by 3 okay so everything else is actually simple the only difficult one was division by 2 by 3 and this is a grade 5 problem which we actually have included now in grade 9 diagnostic because we saw too many kids failing this not just kids we take tests of teachers who come on our B Galileo platform many teachers masters in mathematics actually did did not do this problem well correctly and that's why we have actually included it in grade 9 diagnostic to just see the level where the kids are though this is not a problem of grade 9 we we actually what we did just for a test we gave this problem to a grade 6 child and we told him when you divide by 3 or by a whole number it is actually making it into 2 by reducing what is what is needed so 24 if you have to make it into 2 equal half you have by reducing you that will become 12 and 12 and we said now tell us what will it be if you have to divide it by 1 by 2 or 1 by 3 and the child was himself able to extrapolate to visualize and come back with a solution because it triggered the right faculties in his brain he was able to come back and say if i have to divide it by 1 by 2 that should going by the same logic it should be make it into half by adding what is needed so how do you make a 24 into half you have to add an equal amount and that's the right answer this is a beautiful explanation a ingenuous explanation of a problem by a grade 6 kid because you are teaching him how to apply how, and question what is being told and come back to his own conclusion over that's one reason why over 90 percent of our students actually just don't show in fact the number is way higher i am just averaging it out over 90 percent of our kids across uh, united states middle east uh, where we serve are actually showing improvement in maths not just math they show improvement in other subjects as well because their ability their confidence to logically think come back to a solution starts permeating into areas beyond math so mathematical way of life of course you know what it be it would be it would definitely not be on test and paper it would definitely not be on learning by road it will definitely not be because somebody is has got high marks it would be on attempts the mathematical way of life would actually be where uh, curiosity and questioning is respected and accepted where observation uh, is accepted and uh, is encouraged uh, and and uh, is being given space and time that is required to use those uh, the observation and then try to find a solution and which actually has uh, respect for analyzing coming out of their own perspective their own aspects of trying to find a solution that is what the mathematical way of life would be to be a respecting creative attempts over faster solutions uh, learn by road solutions and that is why uh, uh, this is something that we have we have applied in our own platform uh, you know and we have a few patents applied for our plat b galileo math learning platform because we applied those mathematical thinking principle in trying to make the offering better for our kids uh, uh, by and also trying to give them the right surrounding atmosphere the right ecosystem for learning math in a holistic way uh, by including voice by including application of uh, coding uh, learning math application through coding in a very synchronized way galileo galilei summarized it well if we have to solve problem first we need to understand the problem so if we have to have a better universe we have to understand universe and galileo says the language in which universe is written is mathematics if you do not understand the language 
you are not going to understand the universe you are not going to be able to solve the problems that the world is is, is uh, throwing at you or is going to throw in the future with this i just summarize and i just hope that you all are blessed with the mathematical way of life because that's our future thank you